Okay, uh, next up is uh, Shama Chancellor of uh, Stamp Chat, and uh, he's going to tell us how Stamp Chat will change messaging. Over to you, Shama. Hi. Yeah, so um, Stamp is my Bitcoin Cash wallet that I've been working on, and I want to talk a little bit about that. But um, additionally, I want to talk about how it works because I want to convince other wallet developers to interoperate with it. So hopefully my slides are visible here. I'm not super familiar with this. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So um, stamp is the wallet. And then uh, there's a suite of protocols that power it called Cash Web. Um, I've got a link to the white paper down here at the bottom. Um, so if you're interested in that, uh, go check it out. I don't have a ton of time uh, for this presentation. So most of the details will be uh, more in the white paper. So what is Stamp? Uh, Stamp is a uh, cryptocurrency wallet, um, but our focus is on um, <clears throat> digital communications, uh, as well as financial transactions. So uh, Bitcoin fundamentally is a social network, but right now it only provides a way to transfer uh, value between members of this social network. And I wanna enable um, people to communicate additional information along with that value. Um, and so some of the things that are enabled by doing this are um, peer-to-peer -peer messaging, open uh, marketplaces, dApps, uh, DeFi protocols. You know, you could build a decentralized exchange with uh, this messaging system. Um, and also all of the social networks online right now are operated by a company. Um, and as such, uh, you know, Facebook Messenger doesn't interoperate with Zoom, it doesn't interoperate with uh, Google Hangouts. Um, doesn't interoperate with WhatsApp or Telegram, and all of these systems have their own moderation mechanisms in order to keep spam off of there. But if they can keep spam off, they can also keep people off, um, and they can also monitor our conversations. A lot of people think that Telegram is private. That's really not. Um, all of the messages by default are unencrypted, and if you want to start a secret chat with somebody, uh, they can man in the middle of the keys if they wanted to. Um, so Stamp is built on this uh, cash web protocol suite that doesn't allow any of that to occur. Um, and this is what Stamp looks like right now. Um, it's kind of modeled after a traditional messenger that people might be familiar with. Um, one of the you know, clear differences here is uh, on the lower left, you can send Bitcoins right in that. And that's basically, um, those are private transactions because wallets can interoperate right on the, um, through the cash web protocol, they can negotiate using uh, different addresses than the one that you provided up front. So you can reuse your account address without having to continually go to your wallet and, and generate a new, uh, a new recipient address. Like you don't have to provide that every single time. So it, uh, it simplifies uh, sending uh, Bitcoin to other individuals. And then in addition, uh, when you send a message in Cash Web, there's a small payment that goes with it. Uh, and on the lower left here, you can see that that's uh, 5,000 sats for me right now. Uh, and that uh, essentially keeps spam off the network. Uh, and this is based around Hal Finney's idea of reusable proof of work, um, which uh, uh, essentially attaches some value to every message. And then that value can be used, reused by the recipient. If it's a peer-to-peer -peer conversation, then you, you know, you're exchanging the same 5,000 sats back and forth. It really doesn't cost you anything. But if you want to send out a wide mass mailing, uh, a lot of those recipients won't respond and it will cost you a lot of money to do that. Um, and so that's the way that Stamp maintains a, a unmoderated and decentralized system. Um, by attaching small payments to all of the messages. Um, why would we want to do that? Uh, it's important you know, that we're able to speak and transact without censorship. And in order to do that, we need a platform that's not managed by anyone. Um, uh, if we want to maintain our free speech, 
the, the, like, we don't have any other options. Um, so uh, what does something like this allow? I talked about it a little bit already. Um, it allows a lot of data to be transferred off chain directly to another wallet. So uh, a lot of uh, these existing systems require broadcasting up return messages and everybody gets to see them. Even if they're encrypted, they have to process this data. It's very unnecessary. Um, so Cash Web sends messages directly to other people's wallet. And in that way, it's sharded so that it's it's much more scalable than um, just using the op return mechanisms. It allows things like seamless multi-sigs. So one wallet can message another wallet, wallet requesting um, that they sign a transaction and the other user can just approve that. Um, it doesn't require specialized infrastructure like the existing um, multi-sig wallets. Like if you want a, uh, if you want a multi-sig wallet uh, with a Bitcoin.com wallet, it won't work with a copay wallet. Um, whereas if uh, both of these wallets use just the Cash Web protocol to do that, uh, they would interoperate. And it allows every wallet uh, developer in the ecosystem to band together to compete with uh, outside cryptocurrencies, outside messaging platforms, outside payment systems. And allows things like confidential transactions because you can uh, do things that are very similar to like Mimblewimble um, and send all of the metadata that would be required for the recipient to spend those uh, that group of transactions off chain in an encrypted way that nobody else can um, can observe. It also allows things like pay to endpoint, which allows you to exchange UTXOs with one of your contacts. Um, so you could swap UTXOs in such a way that uh, uh, it would break uh, chain analysis. Um, so there's a lot of different options there for any interactive cryptographic protocols. Right now, if you want to do anything interactive, uh, wallets like Electron Cash require serializing uh, the data into like Base64, and then you have to email it to the person or contact them on Telegram. This means that you have to exchange uh, Bitcoin Cash addresses in addition to some other kind of communications platform. Um, by using Stamp and, and uh, the Cash Web protocol, wallets are able to obviate all of those uh, extra interactions. Um, it allows different wallet places. Uh, it allows dApps. Um, you can seamlessly integrate with existing web applications. Um, the stamp wallet itself, uh, uh, all of the relay systems and the account registration systems um, are all based on um, standard HTTP2 uh, um, protocols. Uh, protobufs um, and websockets so that they uh, work with existing uh, digital infrastructure like load balancers. You could implement chatbots that handle money. Uh, you, could, you know, you could, for example, you could just implement a dice game very easily. Um, in order to do this, there's a few things that have to be solved. Um, you need identity management. One of the big problems right now is that if you have um, an address that you've advertised as uh, uh, just for somebody, one of your friends to send money to, uh, if you lose that key or it gets compromised, uh, you'd have to go to all your contacts and re-notify them of uh, that you're using a new address and to don't, don't send any payments uh, to the old address. Um, Cash Web's identity management system allows you to advertise a revocation and advertise a new address in such a way that whoever compromised your key uh, can't do that in, on your behalf. And this is a really big problem because it's not generally a question of if uh, you know, a non-technical user's key will be compromised, but when. Um, and the identity also needs to be decentralized. You don't want uh, some company to have access to revoke your identity or censor you online. Um, but if there's no central manager, you need a way to combat spam and you need incentives for people to uh, run the infrastructure involved in this. Um, so uh, like I said, Cash Web Systems allows uh, significantly more than just Stamp to operate. Um, and the wallet-to-wallet -wallet communications uh, 
allow all these advanced features on Bitcoin Cash that you can't currently do without a lot of uh, manual uh, exchanges of outside information. And the philosophy for these protocols is that it should be sim simple. Um, you should be able to migrate your identity from one uh, relay server to another. One of the big problems with email right now is, you know, you have uh, shama at gmail.com. If I want to uh, create a new email address because I don't like Gmail, which is something that actually I would like to do, uh, I would have to go to everyone that has my existing email address and tell them I'm now not using that. Um, within Cash Web, you don't need to do that. You can advertise through the Cash Web system that I'm not using Google to provide my Cash Web account anymore. Um, you need to be able to recover your identity if your keys get lost. Uh, it needs to be secure and private. Uh, it needs to be permissionless. Everyone should be able to interact with this system and nobody should be able to be censored on it. And the privacy level that you choose to have should be um, implemented in the wallet itself. And the protocol should enable that wallet to be as private as the end user desires. In some cases that ends up costing more money because your transactions will be larger. Um, it needs to be extensible to all the wallet developers in the ecosystem. So the stamp protocol is very um, uh, payload agnostic. As long as a wallet implements a particular type of payload, then uh, they can interoperate. And then it, it should be able to be integrated with existing web infrastructure so that it's easy for standard web developers to use it. A lot of the existing um, efforts that are being made in Bitcoin Cash rely on these op return um, transactions um, and then other notification systems. They require address indexing. All this stuff's very unfamiliar to standard web developers. Um, they're familiar with things like HTTP, WebSockets, JDPT tokens, et cetera. So Cash Web's built on all of that, uh, that existing technology. Um, the central concepts then is that we use web standards. We use cryptocurrency to prevent abuse. We provide an identity mechanism and a standard message format that wallets can implement. Um, so there's a couple, there's three pieces of infrastructure that uh, are key to implementing the Cash Web system. One is the key server. It's a shared everything key value store um, and identity management system. It also provides discovery for relay servers and it has DDoS protection so that it can't be overwhelmed. Um, so there's the existing GPG key, uh, key servers online. Um, some of you may be aware that they had a big DDoS attack where essentially people were advertising uh, thousands and thousands of uh, PGP or GPG keys um, because it didn't cost anything to register them. And that took down the system for quite a while. Um, the way that uh, the Cash Web key servers operate, somebody actually has to spend some Bitcoin cash to register their identity with it. Um, and this is in this way, it, you can't just go and register uh, tons and tons of identities. Um, and because it's shared everything, key value score, everyone running a key server um, advertises your account. Um, and that allows for wallets to go to this key server network, any particular one they want. Um, and ask for a cryptographically secure payload that you provided in uh, a key. And the key in the key value store is essentially your Bitcoin cash address. So the payload then uh, has a bunch of metadata associated with it. And then it's signed with the key that uh, is associated with that Bitcoin cash address. Um, it also advertises your public key. So then all your contacts actually have your public key and they can do encryption based on that. Um, so that's how all of the uh, messaging on Stamp is cryptographically uh, secure and, and encrypted by default. And then uh, the metadata in those uh, in the key servers associated with your address 
can include a lot of different stuff. For example, it could include a V card. So you could have a business card. Somebody just stands the QR code on it that has your Bitcoin cash address. They go to the key servers and they get whatever other contact information they wanted uh, or whatever other contact information that you advertise. Um, but it, most importantly, it advertises essentially your uh, where you receive messages. So somewhat similar to your email server. And this is how you get rid of the at gmail.com portion. If you wanna to migrate to a new uh, relay provider, you just update what your metadata in the key server says, and then you can move your messages uh, through a migration process if you wanna maintain them. Uh, the relay servers will provide uh, the mechanism for wallets to communicate with each other so instead of directly advertising a wallet's address, um, which would not work if you were offline and changes frequently, um, you advertise a relay server. So uh, the basic flow would be your, your new friend goes to the key server, looks up your Bitcoin cash address, finds your relay server, uh, and then it would construct a message and send it to the relay server where you um, are known to look for messages. And then if you're offline, you can go and fetch that message later, or you can get a real-time notification uh, for that message through a WebSocket. And then the final piece of the infrastructure are wallets and other clients. So wallets, bots, um, dApps, et cetera. So that is the basics of everything. I've reserved some time here for questions. Um, not sure quite how I can see where those are, though. Uh, George could help me out here. Absolutely. Wonderful presentation. Uh, so um, this is a good time to ask uh, Shama your questions. Uh, let's see. So I think one question is, uh, how far away is a mobile uh, version? So um, we've chosen a framework that works on mobile, but we've been pretty heavily focused on just making the whole thing work. Um, so in order to work on mobile, essentially what we need to do is fix all the layouts so that they also function on mobile and not just uh, desktop. And then we need uh, accounts on the Android and Apple store. And that's about it. So it's not, it's not super far away, but we're more focused on getting the protocol right. Um, we don't want to have to do protocol migrations um, in the future. Um, we'd sort of like to, uh, as, as best as possible, um, solidify them right now while we're still on testnet and then sort of move into the uh, mobile ecosystem. I believe it's absolutely important because uh, you know, I receive most of my messaging on my phone. Um, and so clearly desktop is not uh, not where we want to be long term. Um, but that is one thing that Stamp also enables is that um, because of these relay servers, you can uh, receive messages across multiple devices as long as they share the same account uh, and they'll all stay in sync. Then this, because all these messages are encrypted, uh, it also allows some other interesting applications like storing files that you want to access across multiple devices. Um, maybe doing password management, et cetera. All right, uh, question from the chat. When can we get Stamp on mainnet? Uh, I will uh, put Stamp on mainnet when I'm comfortable that I'm not gonna uh, cause any financial loss. Um, uh, right now I'm providing um, the few key servers and relay servers that are up. Um, one of the things about Stamp is that you do have these messages that are stored in an encrypted backend online. So you can recover your wallet very easily, but if um, I need to change the protocol, I either need to do a seamless migration or, um, or your funds could potentially be lost if you don't export them first. Um, and I don't want people to have to go through these pro that, that process. And also I need to be confident that uh, these backends are highly available for people so they're not going up and down. Um, so that's my main two concerns. I expect to have mobile and uh, be on mainnet by the end of the year. Um, 
Okay, cool. A uh, question from Chris Troutner. How are you planning to abstract the abstract these ideas, make the generally accessible, make them generally accessible to app developers, such as you know, via libraries, specifications? Um, so there is a specifications repo um, on uh, on the GitHub, and we're slowly adding to it. Right now, the key server specification is up, and we're working on the relay server specification. We've had to change a few things with the messaging format. Um, so that's sort of to be finished. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. So, uh, so someone in the chat wants to know how they can contribute to the mo mobile version, how to join the team. Um, that'd be great. Yeah, just uh, join the community group, and then, um, uh, and then, yeah, message me, and we can get you on the GitHub. I can show you how to download the um, set up a dev developer environment and uh, and get started. Um, the mobile version can you know can be created right now in in the Android like emulator and the Apple emulator and you can run it. Um, but the, so the main thing that needs to be fixed there is all the layouts. Okay, excellent. Uh, Tyler asks, can people using different key servers communicate, or do different key servers create different universes? Yeah, so the key servers are shared everything. So um, as long as they're um, uh, you know, like Electron servers, as long as they're peering each other, um, they'll stay in sync. And if they get out of sync for a while, uh, they have an eventually consistent uh, um, consensus mechanism. Um, and so, and that's possible because um, un unlike Bitcoin Cash's base layer, you don't need to, um, uh, you don't need to have everything uh, in sync all the time. It's only important the data associated with a particular address and only one wallet can update that. Um, and so you can have a much simpler consensus mechanism there. And the consensus mechanism, the peering is just based on HTTP. The, um, the individual key servers will uh, fetch, uh, fetch keys from each other as needed. Cool. Are you raising capital at all? Uh, yeah, I'd love, I'd love to raise capital. We're still working on all the slide decks for that. Um, the ways in which we're planning to generate profit are uh, um, sort of the, the things that we need to clarify in there. Um, there's a lot of different opportunities for generating money out of the wallet. Um, in, in particular, uh, one of the things that uh, my goal is for this is to sort of flip the economics on its head. And people often talk about um, why would I want to pay to message somebody, but that's not really my focus uh, through creating a company that would um, operate on Bitcoin Cash. Actually, what I want to do is pay people to use Bitcoin Cash. Um, there's... Uh, there's a lot of ways we could do that. And one of the ways is uh, essentially newsletter subscriptions that include advertising. So we get you know advertising dollars and then uh, sort of revenue share with everybody that's using Stamp. Um, and in doing so, we can provide much more targeted ads if people want to sign up for those. And then they could potentially uh, make money themselves off of that. Um, I don't, I'm not particularly interested in running uh, you know, gambling bots and whatnot, but people could do that, which is, I think, another attractive thing for to get developers into the ecosystem in, in countries where that's legal. Um, digital marketplaces, you know, can sell gift cards and provide seamless experiences there. Um, yeah, there's a ton of other options. To, um, uh, uh, so that, that's the main thing I'm focused on there, but yeah, I do want to raise capital. It's very important to get more resources behind this project. It's, it's a huge project. And right now it's just me and one other guy that I'm paying. Um, and that's what I have the resources for. Um, hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, I think so. Um, looks like we're out of questions. Uh, do you want to add any final words? Yeah, I'd love to hear any feedback. Um, 
It would be great to, oh, yeah. So I, one of the other things I want to talk about, the economics, I think this gets lost on people a lot, um, especially in the Bitcoin Cash ecosystem. Um, you know, people are focused on make, uh, merchant adoption, um, but Bitcoin Cash really shines at digital payments, especially because of the volatility of the currency. Um, with digital services, there's a lot, there's a huge profit margin. Um, you know, so you have this upfront capital cost, and then essentially after that, you everything is profit once you've recouped your capital investment. So this allows these digital services to tolerate a lot more volatility. Um, but in addition to that, it allows these digital services to spin up with a lot less expense. So if you want to run Dropbox, you need a complicated registration service, complicated admin panel. You have to be able to integrate with the existing banking system. Um, doing these sorts of things with Bitcoin Cash obviates all of that. Um, you can, you know, users can just directly pay you Bitcoin Cash. Even with the existing services like a VPN, for example, you need to go to their website, sign up for an account. They'll give you a QR code and an address. You go pay that, then your address, uh, then you get, you know, access to that VPN. Um, but with something like the Cash Web system, your wallet can just go to a tracker for VPN providers provide a payment directly to them through an HTTP request, get a JWD token. There's no account registration. I like can spit up a VPN and use it. Um, so there's a lot of things possible with Bitcoin Cash that are just not being done right now. And then, um, you know, in addition to that, there's um, uh, the sort of user cost of acquisition. So generally users, uh, cost some fixed amount, maybe it costs $10 to get somebody to sign up for Bitcoin Cash and start using it. You know, whatever the, you know, the incentive is that is required for somebody to go through the effort of becoming a Bitcoin Cash user. But the actual value of Bitcoin Cash is proportional to the square of number of people that are using it. So you have this fixed cost of $10 per new customer, but the value to the network is, you know, grows with each new person. So eventually there's a payoff there where, Paying the $10 to get somebody to become a Bitcoin Cash user is actually generating you a significant amount more money than that. And as the network grows, there's also a bigger benefit to the people um, to become a user. So the cost actually drops. And a lot of the businesses in the ecosystem are not really, I don't think that they're operating in that way. They're not paying people to become Bitcoin Cash users. Um, so that's another thing that I think is you know, part of the stamp business model. Anyways, thank you. All right, excellent. Thank you, Shama Chancellor of Stamp Chat. Uh, great presentation. Really looking forward to seeing Stamp have success.